We start today's program focused on a historic day in London, where British Prime Minister Theresa May formally triggered Brexit, the process by which the United Kingdom will leave the European Union after 44 years. Brexit got underway with a letter by May to European Union President Donald Tusk, who is set to respond by March 31st with guidelines for the withdrawal negotiations. Formal talks are expected to start in late May or early June, and the process will likely take up to two years. Well, let's go now live to London and speak to our reporter there, Jonathan Sacidotti. Jonathan, in Westminster, outside Parliament, give us a sense of the drama and the emotions there in London on this historic day. Well, it's certainly not unusual to find the world's press out here on College Green opposite the House of Commons. But what is more unusual is just how many jubilant pro-Brexit MPs one can catch walking up and down. We've spoken to plenty of them today. They're in very high spirits because this is the moment that they've been waiting for. Of course, since that vote of the British people on the 23rd of June, they've been waiting for the moment when Theresa May would finally trigger Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty, as she did today through the delivery of that letter. And that gets the ball rolling on a two-year process which will see Britain and the EU negotiate for Britain's exit and within two years from this date Britain will no longer be part of the European Union. Jonathan let's listen to what Theresa May had to say there in Parliament earlier today. This is an historic moment from which there can be no turning back. Britain is leaving the European Union. We are going to make our own decisions and our own laws. We are going to take control of the things that matter most to us, and we are going to take this opportunity to build a stronger, fairer Britain. And that is why, while we are leaving the institutions of the European Union, we are not leaving Europe. We will remain a close friend and ally. Jonathan, in the next few months, until the negotiations begin, what, what processes do we expect to see happen? What steps need to be taken now? Well, there's got to be the preliminary response from the EU, and then, of course, the 27 other member states of the European Union have to agree on their position collectively, but then every single state will have their own agenda which they wish to pursue during this discussion. So that's going to be a very complex negotiation that goes on. Mrs May wants to be pretty tough during that, but she did make clear in that letter that she sent and in the statement that she made in the House of Commons just behind me today that she wants to have an amicable discussion with the other nations and with the EU. She wants to make sure that European citizens who've made their home in the UK and are working here have a good settlement and agreement that will enable Enable them to keep doing that, just as she wants to have the same the other way around for UK citizens who are living and working in the European Union. She said she wants to prioritise that as a very early stage of negotiations, perhaps showing that she wants to be as flexible as she can and make sure this works for both sides. Ultimately, that's what she'll be aiming for, an agreement where everybody feels like they've won, but Britain has a successful exit from the Union and is able to forge trade links and other links with nations outside Europe without the EU's interference or say. Well, you say an agreement where everybody feels they won. What are likely to be the more thorny issues in reaching that agreement? What will be the trouble spots in the negotiations? Well, many people who are critical of Theresa May are saying that the issue of trade in particular and tariffs is likely to be very complex for her. She said that Britain will be leaving the single market because you can't remain part of the single market and not adhere to all the rules of the European Union and that market. So bearing that in mind, people believe she won't get a good deal in terms of trade. Similarly, there's the fear that Europe will want to somehow make an example of Britain, somehow punish Britain, show that you can't have your cake and eat it, continue free trade on such favorable terms with the European Union and yet leave the EU because that will stop other nations who might be thinking themselves about their own form of Brexit uh, that will stop them from going down that road uh, however we'll just have to wait and see which of these is likely to work out and if instead Mrs May's optimistic note today is one that will bear fruit Jonathan, stay with us uh, as we carry on our coverage, but let's bring now in the conversation our senior international affairs correspondent.